And thank you, Ms. McKenzie, for having me and Student Housing and Residential Life. Well, it's a pleasure to talk to you tonight, and tonight I get the luxury of talking to you about the, the elements that make an incredible customer service experience for our guests. So, has anybody been somewhere and you had this experience that was just great that you wanted to tell everybody about? Yes. yes. Yeah? You had those? And then have you ever been somewhere where the experience was horrible and you wanted to tell people, don't go there? Yes. Well, there's a formula to it, right? There's a formula to having great customer service. And if you notice here, it's attitude plus pride in what you do plus the power to make changes. And I want to talk to you about that this afternoon. So the first thing, I want to talk to you about attitude. This is a famous gentleman out of Chicago, Illinois, named Simon Pipkin. He has a company, and the company is called Akaga. And Akaga stands for always keep a good attitude. Say that with me. Always keep a good attitude. So when you think about attitude and you want to tell somebody, hey, have a good attitude, all you have to say is Akaga. Say Akaga. Akaga. Always keep a good attitude. And the reason he says that is because attitudes change everything, right? What's your wake-up song? It's by Mozzie. It's called Bounce Out. Bounce Out? Yeah. What's your wake-up song? Desiree, you gotta be. Desiree, you gotta be. What's yours? Believe that. Believe that, right? You gotta have a wake-up song. So for those of you who don't have a wake-up song, get you one. And when I say a wake-up song, it's a song that you can play in the morning and get you in the mood. My wife and I and my kids, we have what's called happy dance, right? Whenever something positive happens, we all get together and we dance, right? We do a happy dance. Why? Because it reminds you that, listen, your attitude changes everything. Now, I want to, I want to have a few people tell you about some incredible customer service experiences they've had. And you may recognize some of your colleagues. Um, I'm actually going to tell you about the time that I almost went to Disney World. It all started uh, the summer before my freshman year of high school. Uh, my family had planned our first vacation to Disney World and I was super excited. Uh, we had one on ahead and customized our magic bands. Uh, we had planned out what rides we were going to go every single day and uh, had packed up everything that we wanted um, into a van and started our road trip to Disney World. Uh, within the first day, uh, we ended up in Louisiana, stopped by Whataburger. I remember having like the patty melon, it was amazing. And uh, from then on, we, we, we got back on the road and made a U-turn. And that's when things started to turn a little bit south. We got T-boned by a direct TV van and ended up swerving into a ditch. And from then on, we were picked up by an ambulance uh, and transported to the nearest emergency room. And I remember um, being wheeled in by a nurse that had introduced himself as Van. And at that point, the realization set in that I wasn't going to Disney World anymore and that I actually ended up in the emergency room. Uh, from then on, we were split up into our own rooms and uh, I was kind of left to my own devices in terms of kind of worrying about how the rest of my family was and having that reassurance as a van came in to check on me um, from time to time and like ask how I was doing and like what I did for school and what I wanted to do in the future. And that kind of sense of caring really helped a lot. And as the night went on, we realized that uh, we were going to be discharged, which, which was amazing because that meant that we were going to be okay. But at the same time, we called up every hotel and motel in Lafayette at the time, and every place was booked. And at that point, we realized that we were kind of in a stuck situation where we had nowhere to go, no family friends to contact, no way of possibly getting back in the shape that we were in and we had expressed those concerns to the nurses as well, and that's when Van came to the rescue. Not only was he there for the time that I was in the emergency room, listening to my concerns, uh, listening to who I was and like got to actually know me better and make me feel better, but he went beyond the call of action and offered up his own home for a couple of days. So we ended up going back to his place, having a dinner and meeting his wife. We got to, uh, to know him as a person and understand that he was actually a veteran and attending school uh, for the University of Alabama and pursuing an education beyond being a nurse in the emergency room. And that kind of call to action and that kind of act, that kind of act really impacts a person in the way that every little act, no matter how big it is, by the, the way that he smiled at me when he brought me in, by the way that he asked questions about me, and the fact that he brought me in into his home and allowed me to recover, those kinds of things really make a difference. 
So my best customer service experience I have ever received, well, up to this day that I have received, is going to the Rainforest Cafe for my first time. So when I got there, the first question I was asked, you know, is this your first time here? And it actually was, so I was honest with the waitress and I was like, yes. So um, I like that she made my first time very personal and she didn't just go through the motions of like, oh, well, every 30 minutes, you know, we have a, you know, like she really was like really enthusiastic about making sure my first time there was a great experience for me. And that was really touching that she cared enough to make sure I had a good first time at the Rainforest Cafe. So those were great customer service experiences that they experienced while being out in, in the world and spending their money. Most people think that someone would complain if customer service were bad. But how many would agree that you've had bad customer service and just hadn't said anything, right? The true determiner on great customer service isn't whether or not you say something. The true determiner is to whether or not you give them your money again. Great customer service is knowing, I want to make sure that you don't have to tell someone else the same story. Whenever someone uh, calls with a challenge or situation and I'm helping them, not only do I help them, but I give them to the next person who is uh, uh, the person who's going to solve their problem, but I explain the whole problem on their behalf. They never have to tell the story twice. Why is that important? Because every time you tell that story, you get a little more mad. Every time you have to repeat all the details as if you never said them at all, you get a little more agitated. So by the time you get to the third person, they're saying, hey, hey, I, 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 this is my first time hearing this. And they're saying, but it's my fourth time saying it. The question is, what's the best customer service you've ever given? Some of your colleagues had something to say. The best customer service that I've ever given was with a couple of students who arrived from McAllen, Texas. They were a bit confused, but when I was able to answer all their questions, they left knowing that they had many options and that they had nothing really to worry about. Um, I think the best customer service experience I've ever personally given was whenever I was working at the desk over the summer and a lot of the customer or the, a lot of the um, guests would come in and uh, the people that were staying on campus they really didn't know where to go. I'd have to give them a map and explain everything. Um, I think every single time I like explained stuff to them and like um, location wise and stuff like that and just like food on campus that was probably the best customer service experience like I've ever like given just because um, they really don't know much about the campus and you can see it in their eyes that they just really are grateful that you're there to tell them what um, where to go and like uh, you know the campus so well. Now I want to talk to you about the power that you have. All of you have the power today, today, to make the change. Your customers, your clients will have a challenge of some sort. Your objective is to solve their problem and to solve their problem with as little to no additional work on their part. That's your challenge. These are some of the elements of the superpowers that you have. I believe everybody in this room is a superhero. You are a customer service superhero. What does that mean? That means that you all have individual powers. There are things that you do that other people just can't do. How many can remember people's names uh, just, just off recall? Somebody tells you their name, you can remember it. How impressed are they that you even remembered my name? Yeah, it's usually like that high level of excitement. High level of excitement. Just the fact that you remember my name, right? My superpower is to be able to answer any question that a student may have and then give them the confidence to call me back my name should they ever have any question in mind. My customer service superpower is giving a nice smile and a good good morning to all of our residents and guests when they enter and exit the building. So my customer service superpower is listening and in regards to listening that would also be following up. Um, when you provide someone with a customer a, a good customer experience you're not just doing your job essentially you are going above and beyond you're exceeding their expectations you're going the second mile as we like to say it in Chick-fil-A um, and what that means is that you really ensure that you did everything possible to make that experience with that customer the best experience that they could have
What is your customer service? You are customer service superheroes, but what is your superhero power? What is your superhero power? What do you do for customers that make them feel like coming back? Um, I'm very attentive to all of their needs and questions and inquiries. Yeah. Fantastic. Anybody else want to tell me what their superpower is? I love giving people clear directions, like probably think before I answer it and have steps in my mind so it's clearer for them to understand. I'm super empathetic because I know what I would feel like in that same position and feeling helpless and not being able to do something myself. I'm giving them patience because I know sometimes they have to get everything they need to get off until you answer the question. <clears throat> Giving them patience and not rushing them. We're going to say, Akaga, always keep a good attitude. 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 Secondly, remember, you have the ability to solve problems, but more importantly, cougar pride. The question is, if you did something, are you comfortable handing it off to the president of this university? Are you comfortable with the answer you gave as if that person were the president? And if they were, then that means you treat every customer as if they're the president, and that's the goal. I'm so excited that we have found out what your superhero powers are, that we all, we, we all know that together we can accomplish any goal, and we are many, many managers in training, and then thirdly, that we all have the power to solve any problem that comes about us because we all are superheroes. Thank you for your time. God bless and let's go.